So, Russ, what is it about our house that I absolutely hate? I mean, I know we need to get a new roof and that would that's definitely something we need. Yeah. But that's not the sexy parts of the house. What is it about our house I hate? The bathroom. The bathroom. And why? Because it's bad. Yeah. But honestly, it's really mostly about what we're going to talk about today, yeah. which is tubs and showers because our bathtub is awful it is blue let's start with that yeah it is super old it is yep. really shallow it's yep. short it has nothing going for it, it has nothing going for it at all unless you did a dog the yeah dog is the dog perfect is perfect and dog. it would be fine for kids but not okay. for two grown adults for sure no. so today we're going to talk about bathrooms and we're gonna not bathrooms we're going to talk about bathtubs and showers what your options are and at the end i'm going to tell you what i want to do with ours that he thinks i'm really crazy about but join us after this and yeah. we'll get into everything that splish splash, we're taking a bath today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So, I love a good bathtub. Don't get me wrong, though. I think showers are really practical for a lot of the time. Yeah. But for me, I will always make the choice to take a bath if i have a if i have a bathtub that's a decent bathtub i would rather take a bath yeah and that's because i love to scrub my feet really well and when you're standing in a slippery shower it's like and especially the older you get let's be real we're not getting any younger but the older you get the more you're like um you know especially if you have like really good soaps they make the floor of your shower kind of slippery yeah. And, and in a bath, you can put the bath bombs in. Yes, and you can have the scents and the oils. So and let's talk about baths. Around, so we're yeah. going to talk about baths yeah. and showers today. So let's jump right into baths. First of all, there's all different types of baths. Yes, yeah, so not talk just about the straightforward. Types. No, it's so, not at all straightforward. No. So there's different types of baths. First of all, there is what's called a freestanding bath, yeah. which is probably the most uncommon. Yeah, so things like a clawfoot. Yep. Or the more modern, which doesn't have any feet at all. Nope. Just it's just solid sides. Sits on it's, the floor. Yep. Yeah. Those are made out of usually composite material. Uh -huh. So they're really, really durable. And yeah. they just stand alone, basically. They don't have to be in a particular place in the bathroom. Yeah, you don't even have uh, necessarily have walls, uh, holes for the faucets. No. Because... Nope. They generally come up on a post yes. next to it. Yep, exactly. There's usually, there's yeah. oftentimes a post. Um, some of them, they do have like um, holes in them where you can plumb faucets yeah, yeah. and things into. But like with the clawfoots especially, no, they usually are just completely, the plumbing is exposed. Yeah. But it's usually more decorative exposure. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I personally love freestanding, but the most, probably the most common, I would say, is the alcove tub. Yeah, the alcove tub is is probably the most common. What we mean by an alcove is it has a wall on three sides. Yes. So, it, you know, it physically fits into that space. Yes, exactly. Uh, and it's just like, basically, the size is made to fit the tub. Yeah. And it's usually designed, like, so if the builder or even ourselves, um, like right now, what we have is an alcove tub. Yeah. And there was a wall that was put up just specifically so that it fit. For and it actually all the cost, plumbing and the... Yeah, for all the plumbing to go um, into yeah. and then the alcove tub sits right in that alcove right in flush and then you put the surround around it if you're having a shower yeah mm -hmm. so which uh, most people with alcove tubs do have a surround for a shower yeah, a because shower the most the common tub. with an alcove is the shower over tub design yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah but then there's other types of tubs as well because you've got like the corner tub corner tub obviously yep. you can get those quite large now yeah um and you could get them Heck, we stayed at that hotel we, there's that hotel where we stay when we go to visit my parents sometimes yeah. um that has huge uh, huge corner tubs yeah like we could both fit in it we never have because it's just always been me saying being selfish and saying nope it's all for me but well, i used it last time you used it but yeah, we yeah. never we, you together. could fit not together but you could fit two people in it, it is huge yeah. it was a it huge was, uh, was corner a huge tub, tub. Huge corner tub. Then you have the drop-in tubs. You want to explain what yeah, a drop-in? Yeah, so it's where you build a surround to support the tub. So you, usually out of timber. Yeah, but you don't have to have walls either side. 
Right. So you can tile it or you can... Well, they are walls. It's just that they are walls and it is like your... Underneath to support yeah, it. Yeah, to support it. up the sides right. necessarily. But that would take, in some ways, that's a more precise thing because you'd have to make sure that your walls are exactly the height of the tub that you're dropping in. Well, yeah, you build it to uh, accommodate to the, spec the tub. That, yeah, to the but specs then you can tub. extend it so you could have like... Uh, an area where you could put a glass of wine or a candle. That's or true. Like that. Some people do that with so, drop-ins. Yeah. I forgot about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kind of like with the corner tubs where yeah. they sometimes will put them in an angle and it gives a little corner to put candles yeah. or, a, like you said, a wine glass so or something. So you'd have some flat space around the tub where you can, you know, put all your, your soaps and stuff yeah. like that as well. Yeah. Or even so, fancy containers, because yeah. you might be able to build a little bit of a shelf if you build yeah. it out a little bit. Yeah, I could see that. But I mean, as far as like the height up off the ground, you'd have to be really precise on those measurements. The height off from the floor. Well, generally, when you buy the drop-ins, they would yeah. tell you what the height you need to build. Yeah, but I'm just saying, off. when you when you yeah. create that frame, you got to be oh, yeah. precise, or your yeah. con or your contractor has to be precise, because yeah. obviously that's an option. Uh -huh. So then you have so we've talked about the drop-in, the corner, the alcove. Um, there's of course jetted and heated tubs and we'll talk yeah. about those more when we get to the, to that type of, you know, to the pricing and stuff. But, mm -hmm. um, but then you have the walk-in tub. Yeah. The walk-in tubs are the type that have a doorway on it. Yeah. So you can physically open the door. They're great for older people mm -hmm. and disabled people because yes. some of them will open up so you can actually slide into it from a wheelchair. Yes, exactly. So they're really, really uh, handy Handy for anybody with a disability. Yes. You haven't got to step over that bathtub to get in. Correct. And you still got to soak it. So tub. people who have mobility yeah. issues, which are often elderly, but it's not just elderly. So people who have mobility issues but would like yeah. to be able to soak. Because, see, uh -huh. that's the thing is that a lot of people, when they get mobility issues, they'll just go straight to, they'll take out the tub entirely and just put in a shower. Uh, yeah, with a seat. But in that there can be, like that. but that can be really dangerous because if it is the the only one in the house that can knock the value of your house way down. Yeah, so I don't know if, if it's people the only realize it, but if you only have one bathroom in your house, which a lot of houses or only there, one tub shower, uh, yeah, you you really need to keep the tub. Yeah, because for resale value, any families that are buying it that yes. have younger kids or mm -hmm. a future sale, uh, they're going to want a bathtub for the kids. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so a shower over the tub or if you've got two bathrooms, no problem. Have right. one with a walk-in shower and, and the other one has the bathtub. Right, exactly. And that's fine as long as you've got at least one bathtub in a house. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be the master. No, it doesn't. So if somebody no. doesn't, if a master, if the, what you would rather mm -hmm. have is a really big shower and no tub in the master, that's actually not a problem for no, most people. No, we see that a lot of times. We do, absolutely. So that's like the types of baths. Um, of course, now let's talk about the types of showers because we've kind of been talking about, well, those who don't want a, a, a walk-in tub might opt for, because of their mobility or their, um, or, um, their disability, Yep. Um, might want a shower instead. Exactly. Some of them with yep. a seat, some of them without. Uh -huh. um, we've seen a couple of houses that were fully kitted out for disability purposes yep. where it was just a wet room. We'll talk a little more about yep. that later. But where it was basically just a, they could roll right into the shower in their, in like a specialty chair, Yeah. Um, you know, and just roll in and shower off in that chair. Like that was like yeah. their, their wheelchair for showering. Mm -hmm. And so there was no edge, no yeah. lip, Some um, of just a drain I've seen, in the floor. I've actually seen a hoist where yep. it travels from the bedroom into a shower room. Oh yeah, I saw room. that. You I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. That and, was cool. and it had a roller uh, along the ceiling so they could actually roll themselves into the bathroom. Yes. And it was a wet room so they could take a shower in this harness. Yeah. Exactly. So it was pretty cool because it, it allowed was. them to have a lot of independence. Yeah. The the guy who owned the house, but he was selling uh -huh. it. So it yeah. was a little bit of a little bit of a tough sale for that for it wasn't our listing, but it was a little bit of a tough sale because you know, it is a very unique thing and it was the only bathroom in the house. So yeah. Um, but the types of showers, most people would have like a, what we would call a walk in enclosure. Yeah. So where you just like so have a little bit of a lip. Walk in enclosure because it's just a low level lip. Yeah. 
it's easy access for anybody with mobility problems because mm -hmm. they haven't got to lift their leg over a bathtub, mm -hmm. you know, wall. So it's easy to and get. And it's only in. like, an, I mean, yeah, two to three inches. A couple of inches just to stop the water from flowing yeah. out. Yeah. Um, so and some of them are as low as just like an inch and a half yeah. or two. Like it's like really low. Uh -huh. So. And then you could either, you know, you could have a glass around or. Curtains. Yeah, we'll talk about those in a minute. Yeah. But then they have, of course, the types of shower. First, you've got the walk in enclosure, which is like yep. where it's got walls around it and uh -huh. you're walking into it. Um, and then you have the over the tub, which, of course, yeah. you do have a tub with a shower. That's what we have currently yeah. is an over the tub shower. Um, that is probably the most common combination. The most common combination because you still keep your bathtub. Yep. So it's good to have that. But you've also got the ability to have a shower. Yep. And if the space is limited where you can't have two separate things, like where yeah. you can't have a tub separate from the shower, the, the tub over shower is a really, really the awesome. shower over tub. A shower over tub, brother. Yeah, tub over shower. <laughs> that would not work <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, be, just pull the plug out. And then, <laughs> I guess you just pull the plug on the tub that's over the shower. Stand underneath and that's it. your shower. There you go. Okay. Sorry, guys. You're, he's right. That's I do in this. the bloopers this week. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. <laughs> but the third type of shower, the third type of shower is the steam shower. Yeah, these are they very are cool. Lovely, they very. are great. We've used them before. Yeah, and it's we've stayed at a hotel that had yeah. a steam shower, and it was really nice. It was really kind of like being in a sauna, but a little bit more power, moisture. And, yeah, yeah, a little more power and moisture. Nice. That was yeah. very, very nice. So steam uh -huh. showers can be very nice, but the steam shower setups are expensive. They yeah. are not cheap, no. and that is not. You'll be glad to know, Russ, because you know my bathroom that I've designed for uh -huh. us is not cheap, but you'll be glad to know it is not a steam That's shower. Good. Yeah. That, you'll be yeah. glad to know. That's the one thing I uh -huh. haven't asked for in our bathroom. <laughs> or you can put your vegetables in there and steam your vegetables. No, no, no. You don't do <laughs> but you know what? One of the other things when you're talking about showers is the types of shower heads are vast and so many yeah. different things. I mean, you've got your rain head, you've got your wands that you, that are, uh, that you've got your, just your regular like you know what fixed you head, a yeah. fixed head i hate yeah. those i absolutely hate those i don't even understand nowadays why people have fixed head shower heads anymore as their only yeah shower. as the only yeah you go to a yeah. cheap hotel and that's what they have and i'm like come on it costs 20 bucks to get a wand yeah from that and the wands with the with the bracket where you can put it as a fixed slash wand combo they're yeah. like 20 25 bucks yeah. I mean, you get a shower head, okay, maybe that's 10, but still, I mean, come on, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and you just can't so get... It's much better because you can target certain areas yes. when you're cleaning Absolutely. soap off. And I believe everybody yeah. should target areas yeah. with wands. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do a handstand in the no. shower. <laughs> That'd be kind of like the tub over shower thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. you got the wand head. Of course, you have the combination ones where they have the rain head and the wand together. Yeah, they're my favorites, I think. Because uh, I don't you know. get the best of both worlds there. Kind you know, of. You get the rain head that either can come out of the wall. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But yeah, so you've got the combo of those two. And then you have, in the steam shower type, you have the body sprays. Which, yes. that's what the, so you have those kind so of shower So you have those heads. on the wall going down, targeted at your body area. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're usually front and back in a steam shower. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes some on the sides as well. So it uh -huh. um, depends on how many walls you have, really. Yeah, and how close they are to. Right, how close everything is. Where you would be. If it's over a tub, it gets a bit more complex. Yes, um, you can't always do that, but in a cubicle, certainly. Yeah, and uh, most of the steam showers are actually in cubicles. Most yeah. people who opt for that, because people who have the amount of money to be able to do the whole steam shower, um, they oftentimes will have a separate shower from tub anyway. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's kind of normal. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Rainhead because I didn't know you actually taught me something about rain heads because I always thought that rain heads and of course rain heads can be round or square or oblong. They can be mm -hmm. lots of different shapes, but I always thought they were always right above the head, you know, so that it had a rain effect, but they actually, you said, and you showed me some before this video, before we started doing yeah. it, where they can be wall mounted. Yes, they can be wall mounted. You can get extension pieces so you can uh, take them out close to the wall 
or you can move them out. So even what's kind of cool about that is that if you have a traditional shower head right now, yeah, with the piping that comes up and comes out the wall, it sounds like you could probably attach a you rain shower attach, head yeah. to it, but you're just going to be going out a little bit further yeah. uh -huh. and still have that effect of a rain shower still head. Still have that effect. Obviously, you want it a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, but you can angle those rain heads as well. Yeah. So they don't have to be straight down. They can actually be angled at a 45 Which degree angle. I thought that was, that was really cool. Of course, I would still prefer to have a wand as well. Um, so I think my favorite is actually... But then there's the other types of rain heads where they can be flush mounted against the ceiling. Yeah. Like where you don't even see a pipe. It's just like you have a grill on uh -huh. your on the ceiling of your shower yeah. and it's just coming straight down from there, uh -huh. which is so kind of cool. You could do that. Uh, but there's also combos where you get all three. So yes. you get the wall mounted rain head. Yep. You get the flush mounted rain head. Yep. And you get the wand. Yeah. Exactly. And with, that's just kind of cool. Yeah. Although, personally, I think I'd be okay with just having a flush mounted and a and a wand. Like, yeah. I don't feel a need to have two rain heads, I should say. Uh-huh. Because I think yeah. that's kind of almost a I little bit overkill. that's a bit overkill, yeah. Yeah. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh -huh. But I would... But, uh, but the wands you can get now, I mean, they can be pretty amazing, yeah. you know. And I know that for us, because we have low water pressure in our house because we have old pipes and obviously as we're as we are updating certain things in our house we're updating the pipe work as well mm -hmm. but we still the basic pipe work is the the original pipe work is still there for our bathroom and so well not for the toilet but for the yeah we've already done the the toilet the has toilet? been upgraded but the sink and the tub in our bathroom up here needs to be up i think those yeah. are the only things that need to yeah. be upgraded other than the mains the mains oh, need to yeah. be upgraded but i mm -hmm. think those are the only two appliances so to speak yeah um, and so we still have pretty low water pressure in our tub and our shower. And the nice thing about the wand is that we have our set permanently to the center, which for most people would be really hard and really like, you know, driving nails into pulsating you. In well, that, not yeah. pulsating so much as it is. It's more like, it feels like needles going into you in a, uh -huh. if you have good water pressure, that center one is really hard, but it is a nice solution for low water pressure yeah. because it concentrates it all into that one area and you then get a decent pressure. You get the, yeah, some Yeah, pressure. you still get some decent pressure yeah. out of it. So um, now let's talk about from showers as well, because there's all sorts of different ways that you can enclose them. Yeah. I so, mean, obviously the most traditional is a shower curtain. Yeah. So with a rod you just put a rod across but even then even then you have you now have rods that can wrap around clawfoot tubs that have showers over them yeah yeah and you have they hang from the ceiling they hang or, from the ceiling or you have of, one post going up yep from the floor and then a ring yes and a big ring that goes yeah. around it so so you've got that as a shower and those are actually i will say this the ones that mount on the ceiling with like a ring uh -huh. or mount like you know there are really perfect for those random basement showers yeah they can be really helpful because those random basement showers you know put up so that guys who are out working on the car didn't come in and mess up you know the wife's showers in the, the bathroom, the, bathroom yeah. the main bathroom in the house uh -huh. or something so i think those are really handy to be able to enclose those otherwise you know somebody's in the basement naked taking a shower and that's just a little creepy yeah so, but those ring ones are really nice to enclose those with just a cheap curtain. Yeah. That's like less than a hundred dollars, and you turned what may have been a defunct shower head in the basement into something that's usable for really grungy, you know. Or even yeah. to be honest, even if the kids are outside all day long and they're just like filthy, they're coming in after playing football and they're yeah, all mud all over. Them, Absolutely, then. drop them into that basement shower that's not yeah. you know unfinished. You know those in unfinished basements I'm talking about. Obviously, not talking about like if you have a nice finished basement in a more modern home, but there are a lot of people who are still in you know, older homes that aren't ever going to be yeah. finished because, you know, they're not that tall, but they still have those random showers in them. Um, so you can have curtains, which is yeah. what started that discussion, was curtains on different types of rods. Or glass doors. Glass doors, yep. So or there you can get you can either even, opening on a hinge. Yes. Or you can get them sliding. Exactly. And some of them are frosted glass. And they're not real glass yeah. either. Let's make that really clear. They're usually a type of plastic or a polymer. 
Yeah. But um, and then you have the glass walls, though, where some of it is just solid and it's not moving at all. Yeah. And only one part is hinged to open like a door. Yeah. So some of the walk in showers, they might have glass block wall. Yes. Um, well, and that is what I would call just a partial yeah. where it doesn't even have a door at all. So where the shower part is located, uh -huh. there's some there's a barrier, either glass yeah. block or a glass slash plastic, you know, mm -hmm. plastic polymer wall um, or something like that to keep the water from splashing out. But at the end of it, there's it's just an a, entrance it's just an in. entrance yeah. to go in. There's no door. Yeah. There's no curtain. Mm -hmm. It's just a step into it and go. And you'll see that a lot in yeah. you'll see that a lot in like master suites and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. More than you will in, like, say, the family bathroom yeah. of a house. Um, Some cases you see like two entrances, one either side. Right. With a blast glass block in the wall in the middle yeah so you can go at it from either angle and then of course there's the other option which is kind of like that disabled person that we saw where the entire bathroom is a wet room yeah and that's the crazy part that he doesn't understand why i want i want a wet room for our bathroom yeah do you see his face folks <laughs> He thinks I'm nuts, but we don't have a huge bathroom. Let's 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 point out well, my reasons why. The reasons I want a wet room is it's because bigger than some. it's bigger than some. But the reason is, is because I want to have a big soaker tub mm -hmm. and I don't want to have a shower over it. I want to have the shower kind of next to it. So that means that at least three quarters of the floor footage space is going to be taken up with that tub and the other leaving about a quarter for the toilet, which is where it will be, and the sink. I don't want a double sink. We're just going to go with a single sink with some, yeah. with some countertop space. But if the whole room was a wet room, then it means you have a drain in the center, and it means it's so much easier to clean, too. It yeah. is so easy to clean when you have a tile floor you can just and tile it walls. Down it, or... Yes. So yeah. when you're cleaning a wet room version... It's literally, you're just taking like a hose and attaching it usually to either the tub spigot or to the sink spigot. And yeah. it's just, there are special ones they have and you can just like actually hook cleaner into it and just spray everything down. Yeah. And. Mop and bucket. Yeah. It's a, not even a, there's no bucket. What do you need a bucket <laughs> for? You just need a mop. Yeah. <laughs> spray some cleaner on your mop and go for it. Maybe yeah, And yeah. actually, a lot of people will just take and they'll treat it like a scrub brush. You just put some stuff on a scrub brush and you scrub the whole thing down and yeah. then you just rinse it off with a with a hose, essentially. Yeah, and, and some of these, I mean, if you've got the glass doors and that, um, I know what I've had in the past is a silicon, um, almost like a windscreen wiper. Yes, to wipe the windows down afterwards yep, you can absolutely. just squeegee them off and i do plan on having a partial a partial glass barrier when you first walk in just because we do have carpet outside the room and yeah. just to make sure that none of it goes out into the hallway uh -huh. you know have a little bit of a barrier um because you don't want you don't want it to go into the hall and so yeah but then it's like the drain is like more in the middle of the floor which would actually work better for our drain because it would be, and, and the tub itself could even just empty into that drain, like empty onto the floor. It would not Wait. have to be plumbed in. Yes, it would. Not if you have a nice big floor drain, you don't. Not if it's big. It does, because they don't do a tub that empties onto the floor. Well, you they have all to have, have a, a drain in the middle. Well, that's true. But I mean, you could just maybe pull the, you don't have to have a pipe at the other end of that drain is what I'm saying. Well, if it was a claw floor, you wouldn't. Well, it's not going to be a claw floor. If it was one that's flushed to the floor, you would. That's true, because otherwise you'd get it all over the composite yeah. and you'd build up mold or something yeah. probably. be hard to clean that. Uh -huh. We'll have to talk through that aspect. But I want a wet room because I've seen a number of them for mobility and disability purposes. But I can see, I've also seen some in like designer magazines where they've taken and made at least half of the bathroom into a wet room. Yeah. And the tub is just sitting in the shower. It's like a huge shower, essentially. And if we have to do it that way, I'm okay with that. If it turns into that it is a tub sitting in a huge shower, that's mm -hmm. fine. The whole room doesn't have to be wet, but it just makes sense because our bathroom's not massive. No. So it makes sense for cleaning. Just do the whole thing in tile. I think our bathroom used to be a bedroom, to be honest. With yes. You. It's big for a bathroom of a house of this age, yeah. but it's not the biggest bathroom I've ever seen. No. 
but it is it is spacious. I'm I'm not saying it's a small one. So we I think we could do this. Yeah. But now let's talk about the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what I'm talking about for our bathroom, and I'm not talking about getting an expensive tub. No. But we are probably talking about fifteen grand. Probably. Because we got to do some repiping, and we'd have to completely tile everything on the floor and up the walls. Yeah, I mean, bathtubs alone, when you well, look at Well, the one bathtub on we those. looked at was... the So bathtubs, if you want to just replace a bathtub, and it is an alcove bathtub... You can actually do that fairly inexpensively. Yeah. Um, Home Depot has them for $199. They're not big. They're like our bathtub. Yeah, and um, that's not including the faucets. That doesn't include um, the faucets, the taps, the or drains, or any or of, or the cost to it. install it if yeah. somebody, if you're paying someone. But for 200 bucks, you can have a new tub. Yeah. Which is amazing because I know there are people who are like, oh, I don't want to replace my tub because... Um, it's going to, it's a really old, small tub, but I don't want to replace it because it's going to cost so much money. And actually, no, no. those Alco tubs are not that expensive. No. It's really, you're going to spend way more on the installation of having somebody install it for you and hook it yeah. up right than you will on the actual tub. And the new ones, what I like about the newer ones, the alcove tubs, yep. is they actually screw into the stud work around the tub. Yes. And they have like a lip on the them. The new surround, when you put a new surround on, actually clips over it. Yes. So there's no need for all that messy cork yes. to put that down and worrying, you know, having to change that out every so many years. Every couple of years yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, it literally just pushes on, clicks on. And yes. And so that creates that that. Uh, that, that barrier, barrier so you don't that. have to worry about mold yeah. behind the walls and stuff yeah so that's really off. really cool so the alcove porcelain coated steel is what it is it's like a steel yeah. tub but it's coated in like a porcelain finish yeah. and those start at 199 yeah at home depot very reasonable that's very reasonable yeah um and to be frank if i'd known they were that cheap we might have swapped our tub out a long time ago yeah, to, to probably just should have done. Because it's such an old, But I don't remember tub. them ever being that cheap. I don't previously. think we've looked at it because I've never wanted to stick mm. with an alcove tub. That's probably yeah, yeah. why. Um, but the top price that we found, and we did this through Home Depot just to, you know, and so, obviously there are more expensive than this out there. Yes. But the most expensive tub that we found on Home Depot's website was almost $12,000. Yeah. 12000 Now, it was a walk-in tub, and it looked like it had a walk-in, so you could have two people in it, because it had two seats. It was like, yeah. there was a seat on this side, a center section, and then another seat. So it was a massive walk-in tub. It was tub. a big walk-in tub. And it had and aeration, it had, it had jets, it had heat, it had yeah. everything. It had all the bells and whistles. So it would sure. keep the water warm for longer. Yes. Um, you know, it recir recirculates it. You've even got some self-cleaning tubs out there now. So I was going to talk about that because one of the reasons why people don't get aerated or jetted tubs so much, or one of the main objections we hear when we're on showings, yeah. and we see, and somebody sees a big soaker tub, the first thing they look for is, are there jets? And when they look for the jets, they look at them and they go, uh, there's jets they are so hard to clean because you've got to like run stuff through and they're just, they don't clean very well. However, the more modern ones are self cleaning, have self cleaning. Yeah. Which is, and I you're think allowed it's to use bath oils and stuff. Yes. Like that. Cause that's the other thing you can't use in a jetted tub. You can't, I mean, if you're using the jets, um, you can't normally you can't use like the bath bombs. Yeah, you can't use bath oils, oils at all. And, and you can't use like the salts and the bath oils. Yeah, and yeah. to be honest, those of us who love a soaker tub, that's what we love is being yeah. able to have that nice beautiful fragrance uh -huh. and that you know, that ah feeling when you're yeah. in a soaker tub. So that's kind of cool. Now me personally, I don't really care so much about having to have a jetted tub, but I do like the aeration and the heat. I do like a jetted tub, but that's mainly because I have a dodgy knee. Yes. And I can, you know, that's yes. what I liked about the hot tub. Yes. Was being able to put a jet on my knee and it True. was so relaxing. Um, so I do like jetted tubs, but I'm okay with a soaker tub as well because yeah. I can soak and relax. To be and, honest, I would love to have a soaker tub. Even if it was just heated, that would be awesome because yeah. I don't even need the aeration per se. Um, and I probably wouldn't do one with aeration just because the resale value people do have issues with yeah. the aerators and the jets and they automatically take money off in their head and they don't other people yeah. don't want to have other people's stuff. 
So I would probably not, I'd probably just do a deep soaker tub myself. Uh -huh. But you can buy mats and things to put uh, in. Put, so air for it. Yes, yeah. it's like a, it's like specialty mats and yeah. things you can hang over the edge. So if you want to have that jetted tub feeling, uh -huh. you can actually get that hydrotherapy yeah, with an yeah. additional appliance uh -huh. and not compromise the tub itself. Yeah. Or not compromise the resale value as well. So, yeah. So anyway, so, but that of course is just the cost of the tubs, just the cost of the showers. That doesn't even talk about the installation. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm not going for the $12,000 one though. You'll be glad to know. I think our total bathroom renovation is probably going to be close to 15,000 though. However, the one thing I will say is that the thing that the, there are two things that really raise the value of a home when we're showing it to people and it is updated bathrooms and yeah. updated kitchens. Yes. Kitchens and baths that are updated automatically increase the value of a home. But when you're updating your bathroom, don't go crazy. I mean, if you want the $12,000 walk-in tub, go for it if you want it. Oh, Just no, don't they, think that I've it will... i seen that where it makes it more difficult to sell the house. Yes, the walk-in tubs... Want... Well, that's what I was going to say. Tubs. What yeah. I was going to say is if you want it for you and you plan to be there for decades or whatever, get it because your life, you should live your life how you want in your house. That's yeah. the point. But do not ever think that you're going to see that value back in your home sale. Yeah. And it can hurt the resale value. It so, can. Yeah. Um, but if you have any questions about tubs and showers, we haven't even talked about the faucet op options. We've no. only talked about the shower head top options. So many faucet options. We'll probably have to do that. Maybe we'll do a whole video just on faucets, faucets for for sinks types. for sinks and tubs and showers yeah. and the different appliances that you the different hardware that you need for them. But yeah. Yeah. So if you have any questions about baths or tubs, um let us know. We'd love to hear what you have to say. What kind of tub what would be your dream bathroom? Would you want a wet room like me? Or do you like a lot of tile? Or do you want just a shower? Do you want just a tub? What is your dream bathroom? Leave a comment below. Whatever you do, don't put carpet in your bathroom. Oh, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll touch on that subject a different time. Yeah. But if whatever it is, tell us below. I want to hear what's your dream bathroom? What yeah. would you like your bathroom to be? Or if you were buying a house, what's your number one thing you want your bath or shower to have or do you need them separate like what's your number one thing in regards to a bathtub or a shower that's important to you when you're buying a house or what you'd like to improve on the house you currently live in so drop a comment yeah. below do us a favor click like subscribe turn on the notification bell if you find any value in our content um, that first of all helps the algorithm to help other people find us and um, we actually don't make any money on our videos at least not yet and that has never been the plan yeah. it's actually never been the plan for us to monetize our channel it's more about we want to get the word out to people yeah we want more people to know about the awesome things in Racine and the pricing and stuff of how to, you know, take care of your home in Racine. Yeah. So um, our channel is very much about just helping people and connecting you know, with people. It's not all about real estate. Sometimes it's neighborhoods. It's or very much not about real estate. Last week was about beer gardens. Yeah. So. <laughs> last week, Russ got to do his beer gardens. So yeah. anyway, so yeah, just let us know. Leave a comment below and we will see you next time. So bye for now. Bye. separate things like where yeah. you can't have a tub separate from the shower the the tub over shower is a really really the awesome shower over tub a shower over tub brother yeah tub over shower <laughs> that <laughs> would not work <laughs> at all <laughs> well, be... just pull the plug out and then... <laughs> i guess you just pull the plug on the tub that's over <laughs> that's the shower stand underneath <laughs> that's your shower there you go okay